And welcome everybody to the Smash News Network, least busted name in news. We are doing our fields and features segment here. So the first thing we're looking at is the last four hours of magnetohydrodynamic pressure here in the Earth geospace. And we're seeing an, equilibra an equilibration of the plasma pressure around the planet as the coronal hole wind stream has basically just subsided. We're going to let this play through a second time here as we kind of caught the moment of the sort of the tail end of the coronal hole wind stream there. You're going to see some pressure gradients coming in and then sort of a fanning out there. That's sort of Earth's magnetic field trying to reach itself back to magnetic thermal plasmatic equilibrium. And that's the last four hours around planet Earth. Next, ground magnetic perturbations. And we can expect to see these subside a bit here also. That's magnetic flux density in nanotesla. The last frame was in nanopascals. We'll let that play through there so we don't have to edit the video to get it onto your screen as quickly as possible. Now, since this data is not visible in archival form, at least not yet, we show it daily on the Daily Space Weather videos. We've been doing it over four years. And congratulations on realizing the channel exists. Next year goes magnetometers over the past three days. And next we'll look at the heliospheric current sheet since there's a bit of a magnetic tug of war happening in the east side of the sun. So here's a great view of this, the top view of the plane field plot. Part of the National Sunspot Observatory, the data is derived from 51 ground-based magnetometers and magnetometers on stereo A here at Lagrange 5 and stereo B here at Lagrange 4. And we did forecast a south pole current sheet rushing our way. As you can see, it is kind of rushing forward there and then slowing back down, an indication that we're going to see some activity in the southern hemisphere. The line of sight plot will show you the movement of the fields. You see that blue line swinging around there. It has to do with either the weakening of those sunspots, 2954 and 2955, or perhaps some additional activity in the south. Next, we'll look at the coronal hole line of sight plot. We do have some south pole oriented coronal holes here rotating in. They are trans equatorial now as we see solar cycle 25 kicking into high gear. As the solar polar fields reverse themselves throughout the cycle. Here's an ultraviolet light emission analysis of it. 193 angstroms ionized iron and a fairly well-defined coronal hole there. We can expect a high-speed wind from that in about three days. Next, we'll move on to sunspots. We've got the same sunspots as yesterday. 2953 has been degrading. 2954 has remained stable. And 2955 is the most likely spot to see additional solar flares. It's beta class, meaning it has both polarity fields associated with its umbral growth It's got both north and south polarity umbrae. So here's 1,700 angstroms. We're going to add 1,600 angstroms. That's ionized carbon. And here's a close-up in these wavelengths. 1,600 and 1,700 angstroms from the SDO. Mostly stable sunspots over the past 24 hours. So no major flares. We had one almost reach a C-class range. This was a B9.38, it looks like. Nothing to write home about there. Proton flux here has been subsiding over the past couple of days here, returning to background levels, following a lengthy but minor signal in the proton flux associated with a coronal mass ejection on the other side of the sun. Let's go to the real-time solar wind next, and you can see this subsiding of the solar wind that we just showed you to start out the video in the geospace magnetosphere movies. And we've seen the solar wind speed drop down to about 450 kilometers per second now. Solar wind density only about two protons per cubic centimeter, so a very diffuse coronal hole wind stream. Slowly subsiding. Make sure you watch our bonus feature segment coming out after this for additional information about 
the space weather environment. So the KP index is at one. That's a measurement of global geomagnetism for you new viewers out there. Each bar represents three hours. That's the planetary K index. And let's look at the planetary forecast. And Mercury is showing up in Alaska C3. We'll show you a visual of that in a minute. First, a solar system forecast. And there's where things will be in a week one day after the full moon on 3-3-2022. That's where the solar system's heavenly bodies will be located. Next, a star chart. <clears throat> the planetary pileup in the morning continues. If you're up before dawn, you may see Mars and Venus and Mercury and Saturn all rising ahead of the sun. That's from in-the-sky.org. And if you're wondering where we're located, it's in Lehigh Valley, Pennsylvania. Next, the coronagraphs, and we are expecting a corona mass ejection on the far side of the sun. Here's the view from Stereo A on the left and the Lasco C3 on the right. So there's Stereo A. Massive prominence here on the opposite side of the sun. Don't worry, folks, the Earth would be off in this direction. So the far side of the sun there, seeing a major prominence. It could eject. I would expect it to eject at some point today, although those prominences can hang out for days. <clears throat> also, Mercury showing up here in the Lasco C3. Thanks for tuning in to our daily space weather videos. This has been our Fields and Features segment. One more coming out today at the Smash News Network, Least Busted Name and News. That'll be bonus features. Thanks for tuning in, and may that solar wind be at your back.